Acumatica, when I create a change request, uh, this is the screen where I'm going to create that change. If I wanted to create a brand new change request, I can just click on that plus sign. It's going to automatically pull up the change request. And now I've got to fill out all the pertinent information. What project is this change request associated with? Is it associated with a project issue and an RFI? These two items here are part of the project management functionality within the Acumatica Construction Edition. So the beauty of that is we can link a project issue or perhaps an RFI directly to a change request. That change request can then <coughs> be created or, or turned into a change order. So lots of uh, related functionality within the project management side of Acumatica Construction Edition uh, and change requests there. So uh, again, just adds flexibility and, and creates that workflow that I spoke of earlier, giving you the ability to really manage all of your project issues, your RFIs, your change requests right within the project uh, screen. I'm going to go back and open up one of the existing change requests that I've created for the interest of time. Uh, but before I do that, we've got some tabs across the top here. If I wanted to see all of my change requests, I can click on all records. I've got a couple that are sitting here. I've got a paint change on my hotel project, which has been closed. So I've already gone through and created that change request. It's gone through to a change order, been approved, uh, and that change order has gone through its process uh, within that hotel project. I've got this extended slab for equipment change request, which is what we're gonna work with here in just a second. If I had change requests on hold, I'd see them here. Any open change requests are gonna sit there, pending approval, and of course, my closed change requests will sit on that last tab there. I'm gonna go back to open, and let's take a look at this change request. I'm gonna go ahead and click on it with the blue hyperlink. <clears throat> and here you can see all the information uh, has already been pre-filled out. And again, this is part of the demo data. So you've got these change requests inside of the ACE demo snapshot. So on the top section, our header information, we've got our project, which is this Eastgate strip mall project. Uh, it's a concrete project. I've got my customer information. I have tied it to a project issue and an RFI. Um, and if we look at the description, extended slab for equipment, uh, that may tie into where this change request was born from, which is this particular project issue. Um, down below, we've got different tabs. I'll come back to estimation here in a second, but if I go to detailed description, this is where we pulled information from that project issue right into this change request. So out on the job site, a project manager, perhaps a superintendent or a construction manager, realized that there was no generator pad. There's a generator that has to be placed on the job site, but there was no pad for that particular generator. So a project issue was created. That project issue <clears throat> got turned into an RFI. It got sent out to the appropriate folks. And that RFI got then turned into a change request. So again, I've linked my project issue. It started out on a job site. It got turned into an RFI. And now I've created a change request. So we're please adding this to the east side of the building behind the dumpster pad. So I've, I've provided a deep description uh, for the project manager, perhaps, or whomever is going to be um, overseeing or supervising that particular work. If I go back to the estimation tab, this is where I've got the details for the change request. Estimation means this is the labor material equipment, perhaps subcontract uh, cost types that I've pulled into this uh, particular change request. So I've got a material line item that I've, I've pulled from inventory, which is the actual concrete that's going to be utilized to create that slab. I've got equipment, my concrete pump, and then I've got some labor out there to be able to handle that particular um, uh, task that's happening, right? They're gonna be the ones that are doing the work. So I've pulled my material equipment and labor items right into uh, this change request like a budget. So as I scroll to the right or look to the right over here, I can see I've got quantities associated with each of those line items. I've got my unit costs, extended costs. I've added price markups to the material and the labor. And then of course we see the unit price and extended price uh, there at the end. Again, we can customize the look and feel simply by clicking on our column configuration button and we can see all that information uh, right there on the screen, picking and choosing which columns we wanna leave there, turning on or turning off. If I click on the markups tab within change requests, I've added an additional markup uh, onto the change request. So a 10% markup, 
This is the amount that's subject to that markup. There's the markup amount. My project task that it's associated with on that Eastgate strip mall project, my account group, <coughs> excuse me, and my cost code. Cost codes are really important on the construction edition. It's how contractors are creating the details of their budgets, both cost, both cost and revenue, uh, and how they're utilizing WBS codes or work breakdown structures and tasks, activities, phases to break out and bill, estimate, and budget uh, for their particular project. So we've created our change request. It got created out of a project issue and an RFI and it's sitting here open. The next step, if it's gone through the approval process, is to add it or create a change order now for this change request. So I'm gonna go back to my construction workspace, and right below change requests, you'll see change orders. I'm gonna go ahead and click on change orders, <coughs> excuse me, and this is going to give us a list of all the current change orders that I've got in the system. I could sort and filter this by status, uh, or by project manager, perhaps even by project. Um, but I'm given a list here of all the change orders that I have currently waiting for me as a project manager, perhaps. I've created this change order. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that uh, for this particular webinar. And this is a change order to add that slab for the generator pad. So we had the project issue, turned into an RFI, turned into a change request, and now we've got the actual change order. This is what's going to um, be sent out to perhaps the subcontractor or my laborer uh, crew out in the field to go ahead and uh, perform the task of adding a slab for the generator pad. On a change order, same thing we looked at at the change request, we've got header information at the top and detailed information down below. You'll notice right now, I have no revenue or cost budget or any commitments or descriptions associated with this change order. If I wanted to, I could manually add those line items or uh, uh, pull those line items in from a change request, which is what we're going to do. So if I click on change requests, the first tab, <coughs> and that two-tier change management that we talked about as part of configuration, that's where this gets turned on. Without that tick box, you won't see change requests here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click select change requests. And here sits our change request that we created for that extended slab. So once I go ahead and select that, I'm gonna add change requests and close. So now you'll see that change request has automatically been pulled into this change order. And you'll notice the status went from open to closed. Moving that from the change request into the change order automatically closes that change request. And now if we click on the cost budget, we'll see the same information got pulled in from my change request. So I didn't have to recreate the wheel here. It saved me a ton of time. It brought in that concrete pump. It brought in my labor for the concrete slab and it brought in the concrete itself uh, for that generator pad that we're creating uh, in this particular change order for this particular project. Same thing on the revenue side. It automatically brought in my revenue budget from that change request. So I'm seeing uh, all the information and details from a revenue perspective on this change order that got pulled from that change request. So I can see the change order, to change request total amount, total amount on the change order, what my original budgeted amount was, what the revised budgeted amount was, it will be uh, because of that change order, because of the, the, the cost budget that we just brought in. It's automatically added my percentages of markup and now I'm sitting here with that information right inside of my change order. If this change order had been impacted by a commitment, perhaps a subcontract and or a purchase order, I would see that information sitting right here on my change order screen as well. In this particular case, that change request and this change order is only impacting the cost and revenue budget. It's not impacting a commitment for this particular project. So the next steps for me now is to approve this change order, right? I can come up here, click approve or reject. If I wanted to email that change order, I could. If I wanted to view that change order, I can come right up here and print change order. It's gonna automatically pull up that screen. We'll see what that change order looks like. We've got detailed information on that change order. Company logo would be here. If I wanted to export that out to Excel or PDF, if I wanted to email that directly from within uh, Acumatica, I could go ahead and do that. And of course I didn't save that, so let me go pull that right back in. 
add change requests. All right, now I've added that back in. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. I didn't save it before I went to uh, the report. So now we didn't see that. So now we're back. We've got our cost budget. We've got our revenue budget. And up at the top, you'll notice our header information has automatically filled out because we bought, brought that data in from that change request. So now we see our budget total, cost budget total, change request total, and all the totals for this particular change order and how it was derived from that change request. So that's what I wanted to share with you today was change requests in projects in the Acumatica Construction Edition.